Hello, good morning, and welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Out early doors, it's uh, well, sitting, there's a bit of a breeze, I don't know if you can see, and it's gonna howl later. So I'm out crack of dawn. In fact, I am out that early. Yeah. The wind is really gonna blow later on in the afternoon, so I'm out to try and do my pots now. Let's go. Tell you what, the bait in that stinks. <laughs> Oh. I do like that sound. We might have, might have a winner in here. We might have loads of lobsters. Been a good, a good little shot. This. Get these ropes from beneath my feet. We'll check what's in these pots. First come, first served. Off quite a bit in this one. Undersized male brown edible. Another one, another male. And another little male. This lobster here. It shows you that they do survive. This one has lost both of his claws somehow. We had one in the pots a few weeks back where we'd had some octopus in there and they'd started to eat them. I had disturbed them before they'd managed to kill it but they'd taken both of its claws off and because they have like these little tiny well nipping hands on the ends of their legs they can still feed themselves they can't defend themselves so if a predator come along this little lady would be in trouble but yeah just because they haven't got any claws doesn't mean they can't, can't survive just undersized I'm going to wish you good luck. <laughs> it's a hard life when you've got no claws. But this is a lovely one, but I suspect. Yes, she has. This one here is a stunner of a lobster. Well above minimum landing size. She'll be probably 105, 105 mil. But, if I can re really gently show you. She's full of eggs. See her carrying all the eggs here underneath her tail. These are brand new fresh eggs as well. They go in three different stages. They start off like a really dark green. Imagine looking at your lawn in the middle of the night. So it's just like a super dark green. They start off green, then they go black, then they go red and black, and then they hatch. So these, I can tell, because these are in the green stage. She has just started with those. She'll be carrying those around for the next few months. What I am going to do is I'm going to V-notch her. V-notching, in fact actually, I'll stick her in a bucket of water and we'll do all that after we've dealt with these pots. Yeah. Next one. Another little, loads of little male edibles. There's a female and a little tiny male. You can see she's adopted like a defensive push, she's just kind of minimum landed size for these. There's a different size for the males and the females, but they want to be about 
that big. So an extra inch. Ooh, we might have a winner. We might have a winner. I would say that's definitely close enough to have to measure. You need to measure from the back of the eye to the back of the carapace. So this section here. That one there is exactly bang on. Bang on 90 millimetres. I'll measure it on the other side as well. Yeah, I'm getting that one to be bang on. So that is exactly the minimum of what you can take. She's a, yeah, a little meal. Nice size claws on it. Yeah, that's a winner. I love that. The bait that I use in my pots, when I'm trying to catch crabs, is I use I use more fresh bait. So if I've been out if I've been out wrecking, and I've got some ling carcasses or some pollock skulls or stuff like that, I'll put them straight in the pots when they're still fresh. For lobsters, I like stinkier bait. It's like old rotten bait. So generally, I'll get to get a load of dogfish. Uh, if, if I've been out anchoring up on the sands, get a load of dogfish and then keep them for a week in like a, a barrel with some salt. And then after a week when they're really starting to smell, that's when they're really good. A female brown edible crab. Still, still too small. This one is... <laughs> about five mil too small. Maybe next year. And hiding right at the back of there. Another male. I've got a feeling this one's going to be marginal. Yeah. This fella here is 88 mil. So two millimeters too small. Still nice to see. The next time he sheds his shell, he'll be big enough to keep. It could be in two weeks, it could be in two months, it could be next year. But yeah. They don't grow gradually. Because they've got a hard exoskeleton, what they need to do is they shed off their old shell, absorb a load of water, swell, grow larger. He might grow by 10% in his next shed. Get these pots repeated and shot back. <laughs> Still with that buried hen now. Now v-notching, it will protect her. There is a bylaw protecting v-notched lobsters. And it means that no one will be able to land her until those v's there have grown out. All it does is it just, just shaves out a little piece of shell like that. And it's done in Doing either that tail fan or that tail fan. She is now potentially protected for the next three seasons, the three sheds, if they produce 20,000 eggs at a time. Because there isn't there isn't a fantastic success rate for the eggs from hatching all the way to uh, to maturity to this size. I think it's like one percent. But yeah, just just to kind of show the size difference. This one here is 102, 102 mil. I do uh, lobsters markings, the markings down the sides and everything and all, all the possible deformities they've got. They are very unique. 
lobsters, no two the same. So I, I do have a folder of, of like special lobsters that I've been on, just in case I ever catch them again, because you do get recaptures. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take her a little bit. No, in fact, she's all right here. She's away from, can't see any pots anywhere around here. So I'll drop her back now. Gonna do, love. Are you gonna swim or are you gonna drop? Oh, there you go. Let's go and get the next pots now. We have a stunner of a lobster in there. Let's get these ropes from underneath my feet. We'll empty these pots. Oh yeah, it's a big one in that one. First pot. Now this hasn't got some bad crabs in, you know. Oh, she's clean. Oh no. <laughs> I was just going to say, this is the first crab that we've had that's been big enough to keep. But unfortunately, I don't know if you notice, I'll, well, I'll show you an example. See what she's like. Oh, she's clean too. I don't know if you can tell by the sound too, it's... It's... Um, I don't know how well you can hear it, but... practically hollow whereas if you look at this fella you see how he's covered in worms and you see how his shell's dirty on the sides here and his shell is harder whereas she's these ones have just peeled their shell you can see because it's slightly soft just on the corners so yeah, almost, <laughs> it's no good to keep them when they've just peeled the shells because they're just full of water. Another little angry male. And a velvet swimming crab. They're hiding at the back, behind all that stinky bait. A round of applause from that one. He's, yeah, he, he's undersized. Well, I work these pots on ground to catch lobsters. You will also catch crabs in here occasionally, but the pots are set for lobsters. They're baited for lobsters. They're on ground for lobsters. If I wanted to catch crabs, just crabs, I would work them in a different area. So the majority of crabs that we're catching in here are too small, because I'm not fishing on the crab grounds. Female and yeah, she's going to be just under an Eighty-seven. So again, next season I'll get you. That bait in there is stinking. I think that one. That one's probably got enough bait to do it. 
but the one in this end pot is an absolute giant. first little female yeah well undersized but that fella yeah this fella here he is a daddy he is a proper one <laughs> he is an absolute giant size that claw there A stunner of a lobster, that one. An absolute stunner. If I had the comparison to show you, the morphology difference between the males and the females, being that the males have always got larger claws and the females have got a larger tail. So that buried hen that we caught earlier was probably a third smaller than this guy and yet she had a wider tail. And you always get the biggest claws on the males. Yeah, he's definitely coming over me. Stick a little tiny bit more bait in these bags and we'll get these pots shot back. These red pots, see, they never fail. Clean down, let's go and find the next ones. Now the last one. Whew. Another really nice lobster in that end pot as well. Whew. So I have a decision to make because I know for a def I know for a fact. That is bigger than one of them other lobsters that I've got. I'm only allowed to take two a day. Whew, sorry, I'm a, Yeah, these pots are worked out in deeper water. These are in like 24 meters of water. So yeah, they take a little bit of pulling. <laughs> Especially as, as you can see, the wind's freshened up. Get these ropes from beneath my feet so I don't I'm not messing around. We'll have a look at these. We're gonna have another marginal here. 
88. Is that three or four that we've had today that have been like two mil underneath? Next season, little lady. The bait that I've had in here has been dogfish. That's that's the cartilage, well the cartilage spine. Inside of this one there are some velvet swimming crabs. Another velvet. And a very well decorated spider crab. Got a mullet going on, aren't they? Would you consider that being a mohawk? Yeah, a little female spider crab. There is a dogfish skull. <laughs> He's that big he can't even move his claws properly. Another pistol, another one with no, no claws. Now there is every chance when you get them in a pot like this and there's a couple of other bigger lobsters in there that this guy could have been scrapping with them and they've just they've just beaten him up. But yeah, as you saw, as you saw the other ones, they're still still surviving, they're still feeding. Well oh, that wind really is picking up now we're we're drifting at 2.3 knots in that wind. Oh this guy's been in a fight as well, look. Claws taking a bit of a battering. Yeah, undersized. But this donkey at the back of here. Oh. <laughs> That's another absolute clonker. Look at the size of that. He's another donkey lobster. Proper big old boy. Yeah. Get him sat down in a bucket and I'll talk to you in a second. Yeah. So fantastic, a beauty right in the last pot in the last fleet. Now, these bait bags, I'm going to chop them up a little tiny bit. We'll get them shot back. There's no need to. This pot needs some more. Needs some more bait in it. These ones, they bait differently. These ones have a bait bag that sits inside of there. Whereas the bigger ones, this one, it's got a band that goes around this hard eye. Different types of pots, fish for different things in different ways. Let's get these all sorted and shot back. Conditions have picked up. Glad I came out when I did. Different day entirely when you get tight and shore, isn't it? Yeah, when you tucked, when you tucked under the shelter of the cliffs, there's barely a breath of wind. I've cleaned down. We're in a position now where I have three sized lobsters. As I'm, as I'm a recreational fisherman, as I'm not a professional commercial fisherman, without a license, I can only take two a day. So I have these two absolute jumbos. And this one that's bang on the measure. <laughs> I think you can guess immediately which one I'm gonna put back. It's your lucky day, pal. Yeah, these two, these two big males here are definitely coming home with me. 
Now, if one of these had been a female, if it had been a, a big female, I would have possibly kept a smaller male. But, sucks to be a bloke, I guess. So yeah, this one's going back. Now, people might also say, well, why didn't you just put that back in one of your pots and then get it tomorrow? You're not, you're not allowed to do that. You're not legally allowed to do that. One of the interesting things to tell you about these two big fellas, I don't know if you've noticed it straight away, is that one's right-handed and one's left-handed. You notice that this one has got the cruncher, this one has, they've got two different types of claws. They've got like a big, strong, crushing claw, and they've got a, a narrower, more serrated claw. So with the big, strong one, they get all the stuff and kill it, and the little one, they come in and cut it up. This one, just checking where I am, this one has got the crushing claw on the left. And this one has got the crushing claw on the right. See? <clears throat> so yeah, these two guys are definitely coming on with me. They are a pair of stunners. One thing I definitely wouldn't want is to get either of those around me. Now, this one, the big crusher, is more likely to break your bones. Whereas this one's going to cut you. I would probably expect that these guys could take a finger off given their size, given their strength and they are surprisingly fast but actually as, as it would have it you're more likely to get nipped by a smaller one just because they're, they're more manoeuvrable and when you, get old, when you get old of a big lobster like this behind its back its claws can't reach you whereas a little one its back's so small and it's so close to its claws that it can get its claws back yeah. You're more likely to get nipped by a small lobster than a big one. Let's get you two boys home. I hope you enjoyed joining me. I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. See you later.